Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the major pandemics that have occurred through history and the modern day. I will be talking about 13 separate diseases that you can see arranged in a tier list based upon the amount of deaths that have occurred. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I've divided this into three parts. Uh, in this video, I will talk about SARS, the coronavirus, Ebola, and leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease. So without further ado, let's begin. SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. There were 8,000 cases leading to hundreds of deaths. Uh, it originates as a viral respiratory illness caused by a coronavirus. Uh, SARS was first reported in Asia in February 2003, and the illness spread to more than two dozen countries in the Americas, Europe, and Asia before the global outbreak was contained. Uh, it's thought to originate from an animal. They don't know exactly who, and by they I mean, you know, scientists and the CDC and, you know, people at large, but they do speculate that it may have came from a bat. And uh, the first infected person was from the Guangdong province of southern China back in 2002. Currently, no areas of the world are reporting transmission of SARS since the end of the global epidemic in July 2003. Uh, SARS has reappeared four times, three times from laboratory accidents uh, in Singapore and Taipei, and once in southern China where the source of the infection remains undetermined, although there is some evidence to suggest that it did come from an animal. Uh, it should be noted, though, that even during the height of the 2003 epidemic, the overall risk of contracting SARS uh, was pretty low if you were just a traveler passing through. Uh, for the symptoms, so in, in general, SARS began with, and would begin, I guess, if you caught it today, would begin with uh, a pretty high fever, greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius. Uh, other symptoms may include uh, headache, an overall feeling of discomfort and body aches. Uh, some people would also have mild respiratory syndromes at the outset, and about 10 to 20 of pa percent of patients would have diarrhea. And after two to seven days, uh, yeah, SARS patients would develop potentially a dry cough, and most patients actually developed pneumonia as well. The main way that SARS seems to spread is by close person-to-person -person contact. Uh, the virus that causes SARS is thought to be transmitted most readily by respiratory droplets, i.e. when a person coughs or sneezes. Uh, the treatment for SARS is basically just you know, quarantine, make sure that the a person who's ill gets fluids, and you know, just giving them medicine that treats the symptoms. There isn't a a cure or a vaccine that automatically fixes you or prevents SARS. Uh, so for the modern outlook, currently there is no known SARS transmi transmission anywhere in the world. Um, the most recent human cases of SARS were reported in China all the way back in 2004, uh, April, uh, in an outbreak resulting from a laboratory-inquired infection. Uh, the CDC and the World Health Organization do continue to monitor SARS globally, uh, but you know it seems like the disease is gone, at least for now, although again, it could be possible that it might rise again in nature, but it seems like SARS isn't something we have to worry about. So now we're going to move on to probably what most people are interested about at the current recording of this video, and that is the coronavirus, aka COVID-19. So uh, the reason why it's being referred to by organizations like the CDC and the World Health Organization as COVID-19 instead of the coronavirus is because the coronavirus is actually a family of viruses. For instance, SARS, which we just talked about, and another disease called MERS are also coronaviruses. But for the sake of what everyone knows it by, I will refer to the COVID-19 as the coronavirus for the remainder of this video. <clears throat> so currently about 1,600 people have died. Now that number is growing all the time right now, but that's where it is as of now. 
and there is a speculated amount of about 70,000 cases. You know, it, it's impossible to know just exactly how many deaths and cases there are currently because it is growing so much and it is coming from China, so it's difficult to follow that. Um, so the coronavirus originated by a new coronavirus that was first detected in Wuhan city in the Hubei province of China and continues to expand. On February 11th, uh, the World Health Organization, they named the disease the coronavirus d disease. Although, like I said before, it's that's the name of the family of the disease. Um, coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that are common in many different species of animals, including camels, cattle, cats, and bats. Uh, rarely animal coronaviruses can infect people and then spread between people, such as with MERS, SARS, and now the new coronavirus. So early on, many of the patients in the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan had some link to a large seafood and live animal market, suggesting an animal-to-person spread. Later, a growing number of patients reportedly did not have exposure to animal markets, indicating a person-to-person -person spread. Chinese officials report that sustained person-to-person -person spread in the community is occurring in China, and person-to-person -person spread has been reported outside of China, now including in the United States and other countries. So the symptoms of the coronavirus are fever, cough, shortness of breath. And uh, the CDC believes at this time that uh, the coronavirus may appear in as few as two days or as long as 14 days after the exposure. Uh, symptoms may appear between two and 14 days. That makes it a little bit hard to detect and, you know, might go into why it's been spreading so rapidly because people don't have any symptoms, they don't know they're sick yet, and then it's just hard with a two to 14 day period. Uh, this is this information is based on previous incubation periods of the MERS viruses. Okay, so much is unknown about how the coronavirus spreads. Current knowledge is largely based on what is known about similar coronaviruses. Um, so, like I said before, there's person-to-person -person spread, and that occurs mainly via respiratory droplets. You know, when a person coughs or sneezes, similar to how influenza and other respiratory pathogens spread, uh, the droplets, you know, they land in other people's mouths or noses who just happen to be walking by and are inhaled in the lungs. Uh, it is currently unclear if a person can get the coronavirus by touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth, nose, or eyes. Uh, typically, with most respiratory viruses, people are thought to be the most contagious when they are the most symptomatic, i.e. when they are at their sickest. So the treatment for the coronavirus, well actually we, we're going to start with the how to prevent it. So you want to avoid close contact with people who are sick, you want to avoid touching your eyes, <clears throat> nose, and mouth, and you want to stay home if you are sick, isolate yourself. Uh, if you are going to cough or sneeze, cover your mouth, uh, you know, pretty obvious stuff like that. Uh, clean and infect uh, surfaces that are being frequently touched. Um, currently, there's no specific antiviral treatment recommended for the coronavirus. And, you know, just obviously, if you have it, tell someone, go to the hospital. Jeez. Okay. Uh, so the modern outlook, uh, the CDC said that the potential public health threat posed by the coronavirus is high, both globally and to the United States, and uh, the fact that the disease alone has caused illness and death and has a currently sustained person-to-person -person spread in China is very concerning. Uh, these factors meet the two criteria of a pandemic. It is unclear how the situation will unfold, but the risk is dependent on the exposure, so how well can the virus be contained? Uh, at this time, there are some people with increased risk of infection, but that's mainly healthcare workers and, you know, the people who are just around people who are infected with the coronavirus. Uh, but if you're in the U.S. right now, 
it's you're very unlikely to be exposed to the virus. There's the immediate health risk from the coronavirus to people in the U.S. or you know people in areas where there's not many recorded cases are considered to be at relatively low risk of getting the coronavirus. Okay, so now we're going to move on from the coronavirus and we're going to get into Ebola. So Ebola killed around 11,000 people in total. Uh, the virus originates from sub-Saharan Africa and it is speculated that it came from either a primate or a fruit bat. So e Ebola virus is uh, it's one of the deadliest viral disease diseases and it was discovered all the way back in 1976 when uh, there were two consecutive outbreaks of a fatal hemorrhagic fever. So that is uh, someone people basically getting a fever and bleeding to death uh, in different parts of Central Africa. So the first outbreak occurred in the Congo and uh, it, well, it was in a village near the Ebola River, that's where the name comes from. Uh, and the second outbreak occurred all the way in South Sudan, which is about 500 miles away. And uh, initially, the public health officials assumed that the outbreaks were a single event associated with an infected person who traveled between the two locations. Uh, but later, scientists discovered that the two outbreaks were caused by two genetically different viruses. Uh, they're basically just called different. One's called Zaire Ebola virus, the other's called Sudan Ebola virus. Uh, after the discovery, scientists concluded that the virus came from two different sources and spread independently to people in each of the affected areas. Uh, viral and epidemiological data suggest that the virus, uh, the Ebola virus, existed long before these recorded outbreaks occurred. And factors like population growth, encroachment into forested area, and direct interaction with wildlife, mostly the consumption of bush meat, which is when people, you know, they're hungry, they need to eat, and they just go into the jungle, kill something, kill a monkey, kill an ape, kill a bat, kill a rat, whatever, and then they eat it. And that's that's how a lot of these viruses are contracted, and that's how it's speculated that Ebola is contracted. And it's not like it just happens once and then that person spreads it. It's something that happens, you know, every once in a while someone gets it from an animal and then it can spread from there. So the history of Ebola. Since its discovery in 1976, the majority of cases and outbreaks of the Ebola viruses of the Ebola virus has occurred uh, in Africa. And uh, in 2014 to 2016, the Ebola outbreak in West Africa began in a rural, <coughs> rural setting of southeastern Guinea and spread to urban areas and across borders within weeks and became a global epidemic within months. Uh, the symptoms of Ebola appear anywhere from 2 to 21 days after contact with the virus, with an average of between 8 and 10 days. Uh, the course of the illness it typically progresses from dry symptoms initially, these are fevers, aches and pains, and fatigue, and then it progresses to wet symptoms such as diarrhea and vomiting as the person becomes sicker. Uh, so the symptoms really are fever, aches and pains, severe headache, muscle and joint pain, abdominal pain, weakness, fatigue, uh, gastrointestinal systems, or systems, symptoms such as diarrhea and vomiting. Uh, abdominal pain, and then unexplained hemorrhaging, bleeding, or bruising, which is probably what the disease is most known for and why it is so deadly. So scientists, again, they think that the initial person infected with the Ebola virus was from an infected animal, such as a fruit bat or a primate. Uh, this is called a spillover event. After the virus spreads from, after the spillover event, which is from an animal to a person, the virus spread from a person to person and grew to affect a large number of people. Uh, the virus spreads through direct contact, such as through broken skin or mucous membranes in the eyes, nose, or mouth. Uh, a person can only spread Ebola to other people after they develop signs and symptoms of Ebola. So you might have Ebola, but if your symptoms haven't begun yet, you're very unlikely to spread the disease. 
So the treatment for Ebola um, is to treat the symptoms as they appear. Uh, when used early enough, basic interventions can significantly improve the chances of survival. Uh, these include providing fluids, electrolytes uh, with IVs, offering uh, oxygen therapy, uh, using medication to support the blood pressure, reduce vomiting and diarrhea, manage fever and pain, and it, basically just to treat symptoms as they occur. Um, so now we're going to talk about the modern outlook of Ebola. Ebola is rare, but uh, it's severe and often deadly. Uh, recovery depends on you know really good supportive clinical care. That is why people you know in these African countries you know often die, and it's just because they can't get you know the good enough care uh, you know to treat their symptoms. But uh, studies show that the survivors of the Ebola virus actually have antibodies, which uh, can be detected into the blood up to 10 years after recovery. So that might give some measure of protection against getting Ebola again um, and to have immunity from that same strain of the Ebola virus that they had. Uh, there is a vaccine for Ebola and outbreaks are currently monitored. So it's unlikely to spread to the U.S. because the disease is so fatal, it doesn't spread as quickly as some of the other diseases. Um, and fatal is in it kills people relatively quick, so there's not as much time to infect others. <clears throat> but as people do continue eating bushmeat, Ebola will likely spring up around the world, well, around Africa mainly, from time to time. The final disease that I'm going to talk about is leprosy, aka Hansen's disease. So it's really hard to determine just how many people have died from leprosy. It's been going on for so long and it doesn't exactly kill you outright. In fact, it usually makes you ill and then it increases your likelihood of dying. And plus there's been a lot of, um, well, you know, the phrase, he was casted out like a leper. So there's a lot of uh, stigma about people who have leprosy or Hansen disease. So I think a lot of government agencies, World Health Agency, CDC, they don't exactly want to publish how many people have died. Uh, I'm just putting it here because I speculate it's been around for so long. It has to be at least hundreds of thousands, I would think, at least 10,000 bare minimum. Uh, but it could be as many as millions of people have died. So I'm just going to say that how many people died, it's unknown, but in some areas of the world, uh, it did increase the mortality rate of those with leprosy to four times the average person. So uh, leprosy uh, originates from an infection caused by a slow-growing bacteria called Microbacterium leprae. Leprae? Leprae? Not exactly sure how to sound it out. Uh, it's suspected to originate from East Africa or the Middle East. So for some history, documentary evidence indicates that it was recognized in the civilizations of ancient China, Egypt, Israel, and India, and it was first described in ancient Rome by the authors Aulus Cornelius Celsus uh, way back in 25, well, this would probably be, he, he lived between 25 BC and 37 AD, and Pliny the Elder, who was around from 23 to 79 AD. Uh, leper colonies, uh, places where people were quarantined with leprosy, were typically operated throughout uh, the Middle Ages up to uh, relatively recent into the modern era, mostly by Christian monasteries. Um, and the reason why the disease leprosy is also known as Hansen's disease is because it was discovered by a man whose name was Hansen. Okay, so now we're going to get into the symptoms. Uh, these uh, bacteria, they grow very slowly and it may take up to 20 years to even develop signs of uh, a leprosy infection. The disease can affect the nerves, skin, eyes, and the lining of the nose. 
Uh, the bacteria also attacks the nerves, which can become swollen under the skin. This can cause the affected areas to lose the ability to sense touch and pain, which can lead to injuries like cuts and burns. Usually, the affected skin area changes color and either becomes lighter or darker, uh, and often dry or flaky with loss of feeling or reddish due to inflammation of the skin. If left untreated, the nerve damage can result in paralysis of the hands and feet. Uh, in very advanced cases, the person may have multiple injuries due to lack of sensation, and eventually the body may even reabsorb the affected digits over time, resulting in the apparent loss of toes and fingers. Uh, there's also corneal ulcers and blindness if the facial nerves are affected by leprosy, and other signs of advanced Hansen's disease or leprosy may uh, include loss of eyebrows, saddle nose deformity uh, resulting from damage to the nasal septum. So uh, it's not known exactly how leprosy spreads between people. Scientists currently think it may happen when a person with Hansen's disease uh, coughs or sneezes and a healthy person breathes in the droplets containing the bacteria. Uh, prolonged close contact with someone with untreated leprosy over many months is what is really needed to catch the disease. It's not really something you'll catch on a train, for instance. Uh, in the southern United States, some armadillos are naturally infected with the bacteria that causes leprosy in people, and it may be possible that they can also spread it to people. However, the risk is very low, and most people who come into contact with armadillos are unlikely to get leprosy, and I mean, how many people are hanging out with armadillos anyway? Uh, so overall, the risk of getting Hansen's disease for any adult around the world is very low, and that's also because more than 95% of all people have a natural immunity to the disease. So for treatment, with, with early diagnosis and treatment, the disease can actually be cured. Uh, people with leprosy can continue to work and lead uh, active, healthy lives after treatment, and the treatment is basically just a combination of antibiotics. So uh, for the modern outlook, each year about 150 people in the United States and 250,000 around the world get leprosy. Uh, in the past, Hansen's disease was feared as a highly contagious, devastating disease, but now we know that it's actually really hard for it to spread and it's very easily treatable once recognized. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching the video. I know it's kind of a morbid topic, but I hope at the very least it was interesting and you guys were able to learn a few things. I got most of my information from the CDC website and the World Health Organization website, uh, so please feel free to uh, watch some of my other videos and stick around for part 2 and part 3, which should be coming out, I mean, within a week, maybe two weeks at the latest. So thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.